Hello and a warm welcome to Mark Langdon's Bets Club, your one-stop shop for football betting insight. It's Jack Reeve and it's Mark Langdon to guide you through proceedings. Thank goodness the international break is over. Domestic action returns. Mark will be giving his verdict on all the Premier League games. We'll also be joined by Dan Childs for his lowdown on the EFL. Um, Mark, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm all right. Um, Jack, it feels like a while since we, we last spoke. The, these international breaks don't get any shorter, do they? Um, but it is the last one now until March. So uh, we've, we've got a hectic, hectic club period um, coming up. I mean, I kind of embrace these these breaks. It sort of um, enables me to do a, a few administrative tasks, both <laughs> in work and also around the house. I was I've changed enough light bulbs in the last two weeks to um, to get me through the winter. I think. Does the does, in terms of light bulbs, then does it sort of doom into darkness then towards the international breaks, and you know it's coming round when exactly when you sat there and sat there in candlelight. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not far short of that. Um, you know, can go and do a couple of other you know, very. I mean, I would definitely wouldn't be very good in the DIY department, but you know, the jobs I can do. I saved up for the international weekends. Even went Christmas shopping. I thought I'd do a strategic. Um, oh, that's dash. Early. Yeah, well, I, well, there's a lot of football going on at the weekends between now and Christmas. So let's um, let's get it out of the way. Goodness me, great stuff. I mean, it, changing light bulbs was probably more of an exciting task than than watching England. It wasn't the most <laughs> successful um, of breaks for them. I mean. You know, against Malta and North Macedonia, do these games matter? Are you reading much into them? They really don't. No, they absolutely don't matter. Um, you know, qualification was almost done the moment England won that game away to Italy very early on. Um, you know, they beat Italy home and away. They got good results against um, Ukraine as well. Yeah, you know, so it doesn't. It, it just doesn't matter. And of course, people need to try to make them matter because whether it's a podcast, newspaper, radio show, 24-hour rolling news, like what else are you going to talk about during the international break? But, you know, beating Malta 2-0, it wasn't a great performance. I mean, we, you know, far from it. But what do you like, – if I'm a player, are you really going to be going all out at that point with all, all of the sort of, you know, the big matches you've got coming up for the club? And let's not forget, you know, the Euros is at the end of the season. I think you need to be strategic about that. Um so I, I I can't get on the kind of England bashing bandwagon um, for what happened in in those two games. You look around, I mean, like Gavi's done his um, ACL, Vinicius is out for um, ten weeks during this international break. You know, a brutal time really um, you know, for players. They are well compensated for that, but just because you get extra money doesn't mean that your body can hold up any differently. So you know, I I. Don't blame any of those England players for taking their foot off the gas. Um, I mean, there are still some concerns, but we already knew that. Who, re, you know, who's the backup for Kane? I don't think that's really been decided. Um, you know, Ollie Watkins against North Macedonia was given an opportunity. It doesn't mean he can't be that backup. Um, you, you can't judge someone on 60 minutes, but he didn't, I suppose, you know, stake a claim um, in that kind of cliche way that you're supposed to at international level. Um, we don't know if Alexander Arnold is the solution in midfield because, um, it, well, he's just not playing against those sort of teams when it comes to um, the Euros. And you know, I would like to see Henderson sort of shifted, um, but um, you know, we know what Southgate is going to do there. I mean, he's very loyal, um, and he'll stick by Henderson. There will still be question marks, however, Mark, around Gareth Southgate. I mean, where do you sit on that? I, I, I know we've asked this before, but has, has your opinion changed on him somewhat? Uh, no, I mean, I, you know, he's somebody that, you know, if he was to go into the Premier League world, like what sort of job would he get? It wouldn't be a very sort of top one. He'd probably be bottom half of the Premier League. Um, it would be his next step, maybe even sort of top of the champ, you know, an ambitious championship team. So... Um, that is international football, really. I mean, you've got someone like Julian Nagelsmann um, that, that, that sort of drops down, if you like, into international um, football for, for host Germany at the Euros. But it's not a job that most top young sort of coaches want because you just don't get enough time to build patterns of play. And, you know, Stephen Kenny's just been given the boot as um, a, a, as island manager. He can have no complaints, but 
I think what he was trying to do there was 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 almost impossible um, because um, the players aren't very good with with Ireland anyway. Um, but nobody really plays in that progressive sort of style anyway. Really, international football, you defend well and you hope that your attackers can can kind of make the difference. So um, you know, let's, let's just calm down and wait. The Euros are completely different to qualifying. It's like yeah, you know, it's just not even comparable to you know to what they're going to face um, in in the summer. And uh, the draw uh, for the for the playoffs, Jack, is ongoing uh, as we speak. We already knew um, Path C, Georgia v Luxembourg, Greece v Kazakhstan. Um, Greece are going to fancy their chances of um, you know not only beating Kazakhstan but then also beating Georgia or Luxembourg. Wales, we don't know yet, but I'll give it to you. We, we, we're breaking news as we probably discuss Everton next I'll kind of interject when when we know what Wales have got and sort of um, see if I can do a live update for you yeah great stuff I was hoping you were going to say that draw's been done obviously Wales will need to get through a playoff to get to Euro 2024 let's talk about the other breaking news then that that happened over the last week and that's regarding Everton they will receive a 10 point um, deduction in the Premier League it puts them into the relegation zone Uh, accounts showed that they'd suffered Losses of £371 million over the previous three years. Uh, the Premier League allows clubs a maximum loss of £105 million over that period. It puts them 19th in the table. I mean, Mark, if you know, I was sat here thinking earlier on today, if I was an Everton fan, I think it would be absolutely fuming. Um, granted, it, you know, they've, they've broken rules. Um, and they will they will have their own say on on the you know the, the fairness of how that's been implemented. But when you look at the the likes of Manchester City and the likes of Chelsea, um, it feels like a, a slightly harsh. Um, uh, different punishment. cases, different cases, Jack. Different case, and you know, let's wait and see what punishment Man City and Chelsea get. Um, you know, I think Everton need to be treated on their own, uh, slightly different um, sort of case. When, the, um, when you say different cases, what do you what do you mean by that? Well, I mean obviously Man City are facing over a hundred different um, charges, and the sort of Chelsea um, incident uh, sort of that was brought to the attention of kind of the authorities came from the new owners when they kind of reported money sort of go, going here, there, and everywhere that they kind of didn't um, sort of understand why it was going um, to certain places. Everton have been poorly run a very long time um now covid got in the way it got in the way for all teams the kind of covid uh, um i suppose compensation that they put on was like stupidly high compared to the rest of the premier league and they still they still fail the sort of finance the, the premier league's version of ffp they still failed it They'd agreed, you know, all the clubs agreed that they were going to stick by these rules. So you can look at you can look at Everton's situation from their fans' point of view and say it is unfair. And you know, ten points is um, in Premier League terms unprecedented. We've seen in the EFL teams get very serious um, punishments. You could also look at it from the teams that maybe Everton stayed up instead of. Like you know, had they broken the rules, maybe that would have been the difference between them signing a striker maybe that was able to score a, the goals or, you know, a goal that sort of would have flipped that um, sort of position. So I don't know if 10 points is the right outcome. It's really difficult to work out what the punishment should be. I always think it should be um, a points deduction. I don't think a fine works. I mean, you know, like that that's what the, you know, what would the clubs rather have? They'd rather have, um, the fire, wouldn't they, in the Premier League? So you know you don't want to you want to make it a serious deterrent. If if you've got these rules in place, you have to stick by them or 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 not um, essentially. And you know I, I I do feel sorry for Everton because they've been poorly run for a long time. They were the ones, their fans were the ones that were bringing up how poorly they were being run, and now they're the ones that are, are kicking off, which is understandable. It's what um, it's what um, fans do at, at all levels, isn't it? Um, I do think, though, that in Sean Dyche, um, I wasn't that mad on his appointment, but I think he's done a, a really good job, actually. Um, he kind of gets Everton. I think, you know, Everton have tried to be a lot of things under previous managers and have jumped around and they've gone for fashionable younger managers at the time, Silva, Martinez. They've gone for big names, Ancelotti, um, Benitez, uh, Koeman. 
and the, like Dice just feels more like Joe Royal or um, <laughs> David Moyes. He sort of just feels like you know he kind of gets what Everton fans want to sort of their team to be, um, which is aggressive. Um, I think to get they don't mind getting the, the ball forward quite quickly and playing up to to Calvert Lewin. In other seasons, under other managers, the 10 points would have um, meant relegation because of how weak the Premier League is at the bottom this season. And because of Dyche, I think Everton will stay up and they'll probably use this as kind of motivation for them to inspire. Um, yeah, to, to, to inspire their their sort of push to survival again. And we have got those um, that that playoff draw. I've filled for long enough, Jack. We've got the <laughs> um, playoff draw. So uh, path B is Bosnia um, against Ukraine um, and Israel against Iceland. So two one-legged semi-finals there, a final, one of those teams gets through. That means that Wales um, have got Finland um, in the semi-finals. Your man, Timu Puki, Puki. Yeah. still scoring goals for Finland. Wales are at home. Um, so uh, that's, a, you know, I, I think they'll be satisfied with that. You wanted to avoid Ukraine of the three teams they could have got. So probably a good draw for Wales. And the other breaking news is that if they beat Finland in that semi-final, they're at home in the uh, final as well against Poland or Estonia. So probably Poland. I think that makes a massive difference to Wales's hopes. You know, uh, if, if they, you, they've got Finland and Poland at home to qualify for the Euros, I think that, is a situation they probably, you know, would have taken this morning. That that's for sure. So um, a, a good opportunity um, for Wales. We blew it last week in Armenia when they had qualification in their own hands. Have been given, you know, a, a, a fair chance of um, of qualifying for the Euros. Yeah, probably best case um, scenario for for Wales there. Then um, great stuff, Mark. Let's move on to the Premier League and our big match. Yeah, we'll start then with Manchester City against Liverpool. This one, the early kickoff on Saturday. Manchester City, the home side, 7 to 10, 16 to 5, the draw, 10 to 3, Liverpool. Mark, well, I'm excited for this one. Typically, a, a game that features plenty of goals. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, um, and I'm, you know, I'm really expecting, um, you know, a, a, a great game um, from two teams that. You know, I think I, I think they'll probably um, finish um, sort of first and second in 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 the Premier League um, this season. Probably City um, on top. So you know, the, the the best game you could possibly get. Um, you know, when 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 we're talking about um, you know coming back from the international break, really excited by the prospect of two teams that play you know fantastic football. Both like to be on the front foot and yeah this is a game um that usually produces loads of goals and i don't see any reason why this will be um any different there is a doubt isn't there about hurling harland um we'll have to wait and see i won't age it by giving my prediction on whether he'll he'll start or not but um yeah i mean i wouldn't read too much into the fact he pulled out of a of a, a game that didn't matter for norway against scotland that's for sure it's funny, isn't it, Mark? I mean, we've been doing this podcast long enough now to kind of see the the patterns that that happen over time. And so often last season, particularly the, the you know the first half of the Premier League season, we were talking about Manchester City. We were saying, you know, are they going to find that that extra gear? And it, and it feels like it, again this season with Pep, he's sort of tinkering and he's trying to find his best formula. And you and you expect it to come, but I mean that. The, the the last game against Chelsea, the four four, was just so chaotic. I mean, it was unlike City. I think we, that we've become used to them being almost robotic and, and and so good. Yeah, I yeah totally agree. Obviously, they were you know going forward, um, you know, as good as ever. Um, and Pep Guardiola after the game was talking about what a great match it had been. I think he would have been concerned with how many chances they gave up, how many times Chelsea you know, carved them open um, and scored four goals against them. So that's not what you expect of Pep Guardiola. Um, normally, his teams, as you say, um, are robotic. They are very controlled in the way that they sort of use possession to to dominate matches and to, to defend, um, essentially. You know, that's one of the reasons Guardiola says he plays the way that he does. It's not because he always thinks it's the best way to score goals. He always also thinks it's the best way to defend Definitely miss John Stones. When John Stones doesn't play, 
I haven't got another defender that can do kind of those both roles, um, sort of being the centre back and the um, defensive midfielder. Um, so he hasn't been fully fit as he for much of this season. I think they've missed him when he hasn't um, been available. So uh, that that you expect them to get better once Stones and De Bruyne are, are kind of back, and and because De Bruyne is going to add a lot to them going forward, but also in terms of control in midfield and stones as well, um, just gives them that balance, you know, really nice balance to the to the side. And th- they've missed that. This, and I don't think they've been at their best um, this season, sort of, a, um, sort of on a consistent basis. Yet you look at the league table and um, that's the concern for everybody else, isn't it? That there's probably more gears for them to go through and they're still top. Absolutely. I mean, just in terms of, of Liverpool, Mark, before we get on to your best bet, I've been impressed with them this season. Uh, you know, that I think we both said at the start of the season that we were expecting good things from them, but they've been consistent. They've looked good. Um, Cop will be happy with what he's seeing. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally agree. Um, defensively, um, not maybe as shaky as they have been in previous um, sort of campaigns, the last couple. I think they don't look as vulnerable because the midfield is better. Um, the midfield is where everything kind of works for Liverpool. You, if you press well, uh, you know, you can defend higher up the pitch. And if you don't press well, you can't. And um, they're pressing better, the you know, better legs in that midfield. And then going forward, so many goal threats. Obviously, Salah, um, Nunes, who we, we talk about a lot. Um, you got you got Jota, you've got Gakpo, uh, Luis Diaz as well. You know, they've got five players there. That, that can do damage. Um, and that and Saboshlai scored an absolute wonder goal for Hungary um, in, in sort of the, the European Championship qualifiers. So uh, uh, you've got McAllister in, in, in the midfield as as well. Van Dijk, uh, Pete, I, haven't, I mean, I haven't maybe seen it. I'm not, I'm not saying it's untrue, but I haven't sort of necessarily seen it. But the people that watch Liverpool all the time tell me that Van Dijk is playing sort of much more like the the Van Dijk before he got the injury than maybe was last season um, as well. They've got a great goalkeeper in Allison. Um, it, I, I think that they are um, looking like the team that will sort of throw down the biggest challenge to Manchester City. Even if they lose this game at the Etihad, worst case scenario, they're four points behind City and they've had a lot of hard away matches already. Um, you know, they've been to... They will have been to City, they've been to Chelsea, um, they went to Brighton, they've been to Spurs as well, haven't they? So, um, yeah, there's probably others in there as well. They, they, they've had a tough run of fixtures. So, I think Cop won't sort of be saying about this, sort of, you know, going into it, but I think we can as neutrals. Worst case scenario, four points off City with kind of a kind of fixture scheduled to come. Um, that's not a bad place to be. Absolutely not. I mean, really excited for this being that the early kickoff on on the Saturday. Mark, what's your best bet for it? Yeah, both teams to score and over two and a half goals. Um, a bet that has collected in six of the last seven meetings um, between the two and competitive ones. I'm discounting the Community Shield, which also um, landed, but I don't think we should um, count that one. Yeah, I mean, you, you just look at the two teams. I, I, Liverpool are not going to defend and be shy, and you know, that means that. They can cause City some harm, but they will leave themselves vulnerable to all of City's attacking talents as well. So can't wait for this one. Yeah, really excited. Uh, Let's get on to the rest of the Premier League games. Right, then let's start with the three o'clock games on Saturday. Then we'll start with Burnley against West Ham. 12 to 5 Burnley, 5 to 2 the draw, 21 to 20 West Ham. Mark, do do you think the the mentality has shifted in in the, you know, the, the dressing rooms of Burnley, Luton and and Sheffield United after this Everton news. I mean, if you're looking at the prices, you'd still expect Everton to kind of remain in the Premier League. But there's a there's a chance now for these these teams. There's a better chance, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it should perk them up. Um, it does drag another team sort of back down towards the bottom. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it will. Um, and the news that sort of Jared Bowen is a big doubt for this game, I think only should encourage Burnley further. Look, Burnley have had a, a shocking start to the season. I expected more you know, before a ball was kicked. Quickly realised that they weren't as good as what I thought they were and I've kind of been downgrading them ever since. But I think this is an opportunity for them to get something out of this game. Uh, no Bowen would make me... You know, I, we obviously don't know if he's going to play or, or not at the moment. So 
it, um, it's either no bet or uh, Burnley or draw double chance. But if, it, if there's no Bowen, then I, I think I'd be looking to oppose West Ham. I was looking through the kind of injuries the other day, Matt. There's a lot of people and a lot of decent players that are still, you know, we're unsure about the availability, mm. availability for this weekend, uh, aren't there? Okay, let's move on to the next game. And Luton against Crystal Palace, 13 to 5, Luton, 23 to 10, the draw, 11 to 10 about Palace. Again, Mark, similar, you know, lead into this one with, with Luton, a team that will feel that there's, there's opportunity for them. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few games here, um, sort of Bournemouth we'll get to later on, where, you know, Crystal Palace just fall in the same boat. They don't win that often. They're away from home and they're kind of short enough price favourites. So I'm going to go for Luton or draw a double chance in this one. Um, if you look at Palace, I mean, they've only got two wins in their last nine. So... Now, obviously, if they played Luton every week, that, that record would be better. So you have to understand that. But I just don't think that winning mentality is there. And that is a, a concern, I think, when you're looking to bet at sort of, like I say, relatively short um, prices. If you look at Luton, six of their last seven losses have been by one goal. So they've, they're well in games. It's just that, you know, the, the, the finer details are just going either side of, you know, whether they're just not defending quite well enough. Um, and it's only really been that... Aston Villa game where they let themselves down. They've drawn recently with Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. So, you know, why can't they get something against Crystal Palace? OK, excited for that. <coughs> now, New, Newcastle against Chelsea up next. 31 to 20, Newcastle 5 to 2, the draw 13 to 8. Chelsea, Chelsea starting to, to get into a stride. Mark, you called it. I mean, the start of the season was so poor. You said that they were outperforming their kind of um, the results that we were seeing. And we're starting to see that now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the luck maybe that they didn't have earlier on starting to get in, in parts. Um, other times it's just better finishing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you create the volume of chances that they were creating, eventually it doesn't matter how sort of you know how average the strikers are, um, the goals will start to um you know, to, to go in. They've had a few penalties in, in big games as as well, which always um helps uh, you know against Arsenal, Spurs. And uh, City, haven't they? So, I mean, you know, that, that does help if you can win the penalties. But I, I think all of them were penalties. So, you know, if you get the ball in the box often enough and sort of create that carnage, then, then, then you're more likely to get spot kicks. But I thought for this game, um, both teams to score was the um, w was the best bet. Uh, round about um, sort of four to six, I think it is. Um you know, Newcastle have only failed to score once at home this season um, and Chelsea have scored 18 goals in their last six games. Wow, um, that, that will do it. Uh, let's take a look at the next one then. Nottingham Forest against Brighton, 11-5 to five the home side, 13-5 to five the draw, 23-20. to 20. Brighton, I think if we would have said that Brighton going to Forest would be 23-20 to 20 this time last season, Mark, we would have probably snapped your hand off. Slightly different for them this time round. Slightly different, but I, I might not snap your hand off. I'm still going to take the price, um, though. Uh, they've had a, a, a free week in as much as, obviously, no um, Europa for them. I know everybody's in the same boat with players coming back from um, internationals. But I watched a game when they played Everton, and it, they drew 1-1 when they had that kind of a free midweek. And uh, they definitely deserved at least a point in that game. Lewis Dunk... Maybe could have, um, you know, his goal was ruled out for the most marginal of offsides. Had about 80% possession. They've had a lot of draws um, in the last eight games. They've had five draws, Brighton. They've only had one defeat. That was to Manchester City. So I don't think they're far away from getting back to the levels of last season. So I'm going to back them against a Nottingham Forest side. And this is um, more breaking news Um uh, Jack, because I, I still had the BBC blog up from the uh, the live Wales draw, and um, Forrester at, without um, a one year for several months. Um, oh. he's, he's, yeah, he's just he's got to have surgery, um, and that, that's a a big old blow for them because you know he's, he's their most likely source of gold. So um, might only take one for Brighton to win this game. OK, yeah, that will. Uh, we might see the prices change after the, the book is clock on with that. Uh, Sheffield United against Bournemouth. Lots of gritty games in the Premier League this week. 11 to 5, Sheffield United, 5 to 2, the draw, 6 to 5, Bournemouth. I'm calling them gritty. Are you calling them hard to call, Mark? 
Yeah, they are hard to call. I mean, you look at those three o'clock games, Burnley, West Ham, Luton, Palace, Forest, Brighton, Sheffield United, Bournemouth. I mean, Newcastle v Chelsea must, must be wondering what on earth they're doing playing um, with, with with that lot. I can't believe that Newcastle game is not on TV. It, but of course, a big game for both Sheffield United and Bournemouth. As you mentioned, kind of the boost that sort of Burnley will have got from Everton's point deduction. Exactly the same um, sort of feeling for these two teams. I, I, I mean, I sort of was a, a, a champion of, of Bournemouth earlier on in the season. They've just started to win games now, um, you know, and, and got a big one against Newcastle. Very well deserved as well before the international break. I just don't know if I want to back them at... A, you know, a shade of odds against in a Premier League game, albeit against Sheffield United away from home. Sheffield United beat Wolves, let's not forget, in their last home game as well. Um, you know, got the point against Brighton. They they kind of they've gone back to being competitive. That that sort of spell, didn't they? Obviously, Newcastle and Arsenal games that were um, absolute blowouts. But if you go back to they they played okay against Man City. Very well, I thought, against Manchester United, um, where, where they were unlucky um, you know, to lose that game. Only lost very late on uh, away to Tottenham as well. So, um, you know, maybe they're, they're getting a bit of confidence back. And, uh, yeah, it's just whether you want to back Bournemouth at, um, at those prices. I don't really. Yeah, probably better bets to be had in the Premier League this weekend, isn't there? Uh, 5.30, Brentford taking on Arsenal. 7-2, Brentford. 11-4, the draw. 3-4 to four about Arsenal. Um, what have you made of Arsenal's campaign so so far, Mark? Yeah, hard to... Hard, hard, sort of Tony, your question there suggested, Jack, that you were kind of struggling to weigh them up. And... <laughs> that's, I'm always struggling, but that's why I ask you everything, Mark. I don't, I don't <laughs> even have a pick on the things. <laughs> but I, I think... I, I think you're right to kind of ask it in that tone because obviously the results have been fine and you know they're they're very much you know on on the coattails of of Man City could be looking at potentially going you know top of the table uh, th- th- this weekend and they've certainly got and you, if you have a look at sort of the other top five they're all playing each other and um, Arsenal have got this game against Brentford so good opportunity for them just some of their performances I don't. And they're not playing with the same sparkle, I don't think, as what they uh, were at times last season. I think they they do want to be more of a controlled team. That feels like very much like what Arteta is looking for. You know, Declan Rice is not playing as that um, defensive midfielder like we I, I, I was. I, I think most people assumed that he would. They've got Jorginho in there as well, so they are trying to be. I suppose more defensive minded in, in some respects and then rely on Martinelli and Saka and the quality players they've got in that final third to win them games without needing to score four and five. Um, you know, so I think it's probably there's probably some sense in what they're trying to do. And actually, I thought um, at the prices that they were a, a fair enough bet um, to win this game. Obviously, had a, a few issues uh, recently on the road, lost at West Ham in the League Cup. Drew at Chelsea, lost controversial circumstances at Newcastle. But, you know, the, the League Cup game, don't read too much into um, as a makeshift side. Drew at Chelsea, I think that could be a good point come the end of the season. Lost 1-0 at Newcastle. It can happen. Newcastle are very strong um, at home. And, you know, they're, they're just one of them games. Again, maybe another referee rules out that um, goal for any of the three um, incidents that, that, that we saw. So I think they're, they're not the easiest team to weigh up Arsenal, but it, 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 I definitely don't want to sort of be too negative about them. They've won at Palace, they've won at Everton, they've won at Bournemouth, they won at Sevilla, they won at Brentford in the um, League Cup as well. Uh, one thing to point out here is that David Raya can't play against his parent club. Got to remember that he's on loan from um, Brentford at the moment um, rather than the permanent transfer Ramsdale will come back in um, interesting to see how he gets on but yeah I just thought um, Arsenal shade of odds on, fair enough it, it might be a good thing for Arteta that his hand has been forced somewhat on the goalkeeper situation yeah, yeah so he's, he's kind of created it for himself hasn't he this this problem, he, he might not see it as a problem I think he just thinks David Ray is better and mm-hmm. if, if he does then He's probably right to um, pick him. Absolutely. Uh, from Arsenal to Spurs, let's take a look at the Sunday games. Two games on Sunday, two o'clock. We'll start with 
Tottenham against Aston Villa, 13 to 10 Spurs, 14 to 5 the draw, 9 to 5 Villa. Um, a, a difficult few weeks, um, Mark, for Spurs after a, a fantastic start. Yeah, I mean, we obviously uh, we tipped Wolves um, to beat them. Um, yes, I mean, the goals came late, but um, at least... Uh, <laughs> never in was, doubt, never in ne- doubt. Ne- never, yeah, like you say, never in doubt. Um, in terms of the players they've got out, it's still Romero, it's still Van de Ven, it's still Madison. Bissouma is has joined them now because he is suspended. So um, some some big blows in there. Udogi's back. I think that that is a... Um, a, a positive. He he really helps them sort of tick both in attack and and defence as well. So um, and but they were only you know a, a minutes away from beating Wolves with all of those players out. And you know, Molyneux is not an easy place for, for for teams to go this season. I mean Aston Villa found that out themselves when they drew there um, a few weeks ago. And uh, to me now it's not kind of missed in the market. Um, you know all of these players being out um, is influencing the prices rightly but um to the point where I, I don't feel like Aston Villa are huge value to win this game there, there's quite a, a difference really between Villa at home and away They're disappointing weren't they not in Forest um in in in, in the, their last road game and so in a difficult game I'm going to go for Kulisevsky to score the first goal at 12 to 1 he did that against um Chelsea um in Spurs' last home game He's got three goals this season, so outside of Son, could be argued is the biggest threat in that Tottenham team. He's also had quite a, a nice volume of shots, 22 um, so far. Yeah, so double figures about somebody that, you know, does play in that Spurs front three, um, sort of, yeah, appeal to me. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. Uh, the other game on the Sunday, Everton against Manchester United at Crazily, Mark, United, the form team in the in the Premier League at the yeah. moment. If we're looking at a, a small sample size, I suspect Everton that there's tougher games for them to have than a home game against Manchester United to bounce back after their bad news. How do you see this one playing out? Oh, well, Goodison's going to be a cesspit. Um, it's going to be really <laughs> difficult for Manchester United. Um, volume is going to be turned up. Um, I think the players will thrive off that. Um, but if we look at the odds, I mean you know, basically saying that there's not much in it between Everton and Manchester United, which, I mean, that tells you that the United are not as good as the results suggest. Um, I, I thought the draw was, was the way to go. Everton have only won two home games this season. That was against Bournemouth and Burnley. Manchester United are better than both of those two. United have won four of the, uh, of their last five in the, the, the Premier League, isn't it? So, I mean... It's a tough game to call. I don't. I, I sort of wouldn't be surprised if Everton won, but uh, I wanted a bigger price really than, than, than what's on offer. So that's why I've gone for the draw. Yeah, some really difficult games to call this week. Looking at the prices, um, Monday night football. We can look forward to Fulham against Wolves. Mark, I mean, Wolves have been a, a, a I wouldn't say a surprise package, but I've been um, I've been impressed by them. Yeah, I've been surprised. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'll put them. I mean, that may be my fault for underestimating them before the season started. And I think, was it the first game, wasn't it, against Manchester United? You're like, hold on, um, they're, they're better than they um, sort of appeared to be. Um, they've had some, some some bad times as well. The Sheffield United game was one that you'd think that they would win. They went to Luton, didn't beat them um, either. So, um, did have a player um, sent off, but they weren't playing very well in that game even before um, the, the red card. So, I'd say inconsistent um, Wolves, but when they're, good and the way they took the two goals that beat Spurs were, yeah, were fantastic finishes of both of them really good football um and yeah I think I'm going to take a chance on them to just win the game um you know bigger than two to one I think in places Fulham four defeats in six I say the same thing about Fulham every single week just don't see them being a big goal threat and that offers Wolves an opportunity I think to win the game yeah, can't grumble about that. That's the Premier League card marked off for you. Let's take a look at the EFL with Dan Childs. If you want some free football bets this season, we've got you covered. Simply head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets and there you'll find over £200 worth of them for you to use this season. That's racingpost.com forward slash free bets. Yeah, we welcome Dan Childs to the show. Always great to have Dan. For long-term viewers of Bet Club, they will know that we always have a team in focus in the EFL. See it as a team to add to the tracker, the good or 
for bad. Um, Dan, who have we? Uh, who are we? Who are we looking at this week? Yeah, going to take a look, look at Blackpool. I mean, obviously last weekend there was uh, not a lot of EFL action. There was only uh, I think two League One games. Um, one of them actually was Blackpool. Blackpool at home to Shrewsbury won the game four 0 I mean, the game you probably expect them to win anyway, but it, it, by all accounts was one of their best performances of the season. And they're sort of a little bit like sort of Southampton and Leeds in the Championship, a relegated team. Southampton and Leeds started slowly and then started to get it together. I mean, Blackpool have taken a little bit longer, but I do think they're up to eighth now in, in League One. There's only goal difference separating them from the playoffs. And I think they're going to sort of have a, have a better part of the season as, as they go on. You look at what they've recruited up front. I mean, last season they lost Jerry Yates, who went to Swansea, he was their top scorer. Jordan Rhodes came in, he's got 10 goals. A player they got from Swansea in the summer, Kyle Joseph, uh, I think he could do do really, really well in in League One. Got 12 goals for Wigan on loan there previously. Uh, he, he's been out injured for most of the season, just come into the side, come off the bench in the, in the game against Shrewsbury, scored a really good goal. So you, you're going to have him and Rhodes going forward, scoring a lot of goals. I, I think they may you know, get enough to, to push Blackpool at least into the top six. Look at championship strikers that you almost are guaranteed a return from. I mean, Jordan Rhodes must be at the, the top of that list. His longevity across the EFL has been remarkable. Still doing it, and he and not someone that sort that really relied on his pace. He's more more intelligent movement and a great finisher. So even though he's well into his thirties now, I think at, at League One level, I can see him, you know, carrying on scoring bundles of goals. I think he'll have a, a big impact on their season. Yeah, superb player. One to what well, a team to look out for, Blackpool for the rest of this season. Dan, let's get into your selections then for this weekend. How many have we got? Yeah, we've got three, just uh, one from each of the EFL divisions. We'll start at the top in the championship. Who is it? Yeah, going to go with uh, Southampton away to Huddersfield. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're eight to eleven. I think that's a, a reasonable price. I know everybody says every game in the championship can go either way, but for me at the moment, I mean. I, I, I was saying a lot of negative stuff about Southampton a couple of months ago, and Russell Martin was, you know, we felt he was he was on the verge of losing his job. He was committed to this, you know, he, he's very much a possession-based style of play. It wasn't delivering results. Teams were sort of pressing high and feeding off the mistakes. But the balance, he's getting the balance right now. They seem to have settled down. Eight games unbeaten. I think that run started with that. 3-1 win at home to Leeds, which really kick-started their season. They're, they're playing some really good stuff now, got attractive, effective football, and, and they're against the Huddersfield side. Since the Darren Moore came in, replaced uh, Neil Warnock, who sort of did a decent job start of the season, and it's not really gone very well so far for Darren Moore. One win in nine, that was a 2-1 win at home to QPR for Huddersfield. So Huddersfield, I look at them up front, I'm struggling to kind of see where the goals are coming from. Danny Ward's been out injured for a lot of the, for, for, for most of the season. I can see them having a, I mean, there's three poor teams underneath them. So, you know, they may just have enough to stay up, but I don't think it's going to be easy. And I think it gets a team like Southampton. I can see Southampton having too much. So Southampton to win this one. Do you think Southampton and Leeds have a, have a chance of catching Ipswich? I mean, even Leicester. I mean, we thought that they were kind of home and dry, but a few kind of sticky results, it, it, it kind of opens up that top two somewhat. Yeah, I mentioned a while back that it was probably too early to, to, to see it as a done deal. Um, because partly because of the strength of those two teams you've mentioned, Leeds and Southampton, always going to get better as the season goes on. I mean, it's an eight-point gap at the moment. You know, they've, they've got two clubs to chase. Um, still fairly early in the season as well. You think back to last season, um, Middlesbrough had a, a, a very big gap to make up on Sheffield United at one point, and that was quite a way into the season. And then, then and, and then when they went up and won, it looked like they were going to actually close the gap and and overtake them. So, um, no, I think there's plenty of time for them to, 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 to one of them to get in there, definitely. Mm, Ipswich Town, watch over your shoulders. Um, so we've got uh, Southampton in the Championship. Let's drop into League One, Dan. Yeah, going to go with Charlton away to Carlisle. Charlton in sort of sitting in, in the seven to five to win this one, sitting in mid-table 11th. But they're, they're not, they're only five points outside the playoffs. That'll be their target to get into that top six. Start of the season slowly under Dean Holden. Dean Holden lost his job. They brought in Michael Appleton, who's got a good record in the division. Nearly took Lincoln up a, a couple of seasons ago. And they have improved under Appleton. I mean, they've had two losses in 14 games in all competitions, uh, Charlton, which considering you know, the poor start they had, uh, that is a, a serious turnaround. And, and they're up against... Uh, it's never an easy trip going to Carlisle. Long, long old journey, but uh, I don't think Carlisle, after going up, won the playoff final, beat Stockport, didn't they, in the playoff final last season in League Two. They're finding it hard, really, to 
you know, to, to, to stay, to consolidate in League One. I do like the manager. I think Paul Simpson's a really, really good manager for Carlisle and he gets the, the, the best out of his players, but he's dealing with a lot of injuries at the moment. Callum Guy, Keemer Fielder was the latest. He's got a long-term injury, got got injured earlier this month. Uh, I think they're going to have to probably do some business in, be clever in, in January, Carlisle, to have a chance of staying up. But at the moment, they're struggling. I think Charlton at that price, 7-5 to five to go and win there, looks a good bet to me. Charlton joined Southampton on the list for Dan Charles this weekend. Uh, third and final pick, Dan. Yeah, finish off with uh, League Two bet. Might seem a bit of a surprise. Doncaster draw no bet away to Crew. Doncaster are in 18th place at the moment, Crew in fifth. But if you look at the league table, I mean, Doncaster have not been higher than 17th because they got off to such a such a bad start. But if you underline, you look at their their recent form. The last 10 games, they've actually won six of them. So they've they've they're a team that they're not actually a million miles away now from they'll probably be eyeing up pushing in towards the top seven and maybe having a shot at the, the playoffs Doncaster uh, Grant McCann he, he did do a lot of business in the summer brought a lot of players in that were supposed to sort of like push them up to be a promotion chasing team after the poor season last season maybe it took a while for them to settle down I know they had a lot of early season injuries as well the injury situation has improved I mentioned that the wins they've had in the league. They also went to Accrington in an FA Cup first round replay and won two one away there. I mentioned that because Accrington are only three points below Crew in, in in League Two, so it's a very similar sort of type of task that they're facing this weekend. Crew have done done really really well this season, but they've had a few injuries to key men recently. A couple of midfielders, Joel Tabula and Jack Powell, have been, uh, are out with injuries. Chris Long, uh, their top scorer, he's injured as well. So I just think. Although Crew have done really, really well, fifth place at the moment and having a good season with those injuries and Doncaster improving the way they are, I think Doncaster, draw no bet, could be a little bit overpriced. Southampton, Charlton, Doncaster, draw no bet. Dan, thanks as always. You're welcome. Right then, get the notepads out. Time to jot down Mark's best bets for this week. We shall start with a bet builder in the big match, Mark. Yeah, Man City um, against Liverpool. I'm going to go for both teams to score in the first half, hopefully um, the, the players are not feeling dozy in the attacking sense for the early um, kickoff. But it has happened in three of the last six meetings between the two teams. So, um, you know, recent trends would suggest that that aspect of the um, bet builder it is a big price. I'm going to go for over three and a half offsides. Reason being that both teams like to defend on the halfway line. Be a lot of space in behind, but a lot of pressure on the ball. Um, and you know, the temptation to just make those early runs, I, I think, is is pretty obvious. So uh, I expect a, a, you know, a really end to end game, hopefully be a few offsides to, to cheer on. And then finally, uh, I think he's been one of the players of the season so far. I'm going to go for Phil Foden to score. Um, you know, he was somebody that was on the periphery um, of the kind of city side last season, but undroppable now um, for uh, the, you know, for, for, for City, uh, playing mainly off that right-hand side. You know, a, a tremendous goal threat. Somebody that as well, you know, Robertson been out for Liverpool. So um, there's potentially kind of an avenue there for um, City to exploit. And because Liverpool do attack in, with those wide players and are, are, are quite happy to gamble um, on sort of leaving three players up the pitch... I think that there is space usually in, in those one-on-one situations. So, um, you know, Foden's somebody that can take advantage of that. He's been impressive, hasn't he? Um, oh, he's so he, quick. His feet are just so quick. Yeah, so good. You said cheering on offsides. Is that something you do regularly, is it, Mark? Cheering on an offside? Um, well, it, well, um, if it was that Liverpool one against Tottenham from <laughs> earlier on the season, yeah, I'd give that a big cheer. <laughs> uh, let's move on to a treble for this weekend. Who are we going for? Yeah, so both teams to score um, treble here. Um, no surprises really that we start at the Etihad City against Liverpool. I mean, the show sort of explained, you know, various points that, you know, these are two teams that just like to go at each other. And the, the recent trend is very much for, for goals at both ends in, in the game. Newcastle v Chelsea, both teams to score. Chelsea have found their mojo really from an attacking sense. Newcastle only failed to score once at home this season. I don't think they're the same team defensively, particularly without Botman. Um, so that, that, that his absence has, has been an issue um, for them. And then finally, at Goodison, Everton against Manchester United. I think the Everton fans are going to demand 
that Everton come forward and throw a few punches uh, at Manchester United. Still not convinced about United as a kind of defensive unit. So they are vulnerable. But, you know, if you look at United when they played away to Copenhagen, for instance, played some good football in, in that game. And it was a 4-3 defeat, wasn't it, eventually? So, yeah, goal at both ends in that one as well. OK, and uh, we'll finish things off of the Bets Club this week with your strongest bet, the nap. Yeah, goals at, at both ends at St James's Park. So Newcastle against Chelsea, um, both teams to score. Chelsea, 18 goals in their last six matches. Newcastle only failed to score at home in one match this season, and that was against Borussia Dortmund. Sounds good. Mark, what's the what's the rest of the week got in store for you? Uh, so on Saturday, my sister's birthday. So um, going out for that. It seems Thank- like you've got a birth family birthday gathering big family. every week. Big, yeah. big family. Big family. Jack cost an absolute fortune. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I was absolutely delighted that the uh, the Premier League switched those fixtures. So I'll be able to watch um, Man City against Liverpool in peace. Probably have to watch Brentford against Arsenal on um um, one of the fellow family members' mobile phones while we're in the restaurant. Um, Sunday, first time um, in, in a long while, I'm not going to um, Spurs this weekend. So just sit on the sofa and hopefully watch Tottenham beat Aston Villa. But confidence levels have dipped, I would say, in in, uh, in, in recent times due to injuries and suspension. Yeah, oh, sounds joyous nonetheless. Um, Mark, great stuff. Thanks as, as always to Mark and also Dan. If you're having a bet this weekend, please remember to do so responsibly. Only have a gamble with money that you can afford to lose. Uh, as Mark mentioned, it's a hectic schedule now for the football. So we will be back next week for another episode of Mark Langdon's Bets Club. 